<laughs> ah, now I got my boy. Just the man I wanted to see. Why am I talking like this? And why am I speaking English? Don't worry about it. Listen, I loved your last series. And I want you to create something new for us. We need something eye-catching that will really grab the attention of our young male readership. It needs to be big. Something with a little pizzazz. Some bounce to it. It could be huge. You could really grab onto it and squeeze. Got any ideas? Eat it. That's it! Cutie Honey by Go Nagai was serialized in Weekly Shonen Champion from 1973 to 1974. It ran alongside the anime of the same name as well as seven other manga series that ran almost simultaneously. I won't go into detail about the various different manga, but I will leave a link in the description that will take you to a page that explains a bit about all the different series. The version that will be the focus of this video is the original Go Nagai release. Since its release, Cutie Honey has gone on to become a major media franchise and one of Nagai's biggest series. There have been numerous anime, shows, films, OVAs, and manga. The version of the manga I read was the 2018 Seven Seas Entertainment release, translated by Zach Davison. Go Nagai is a legendary mangaka and the creator of multiple classic series. I've talked about him before in my Devilman review, so I am just going to briefly summarize his life and career with a focus on the development of this manga. Go Nagai, whose real name is Kiyoshi Nagai, was born September 6, 1945 in Wajima, Japan. His career is marred with controversy due to Nagai's capacity to push the envelope with his depictions of violence and nudity. His first published work was Miyakishi Porikichi, published in Bokura Magazine in 1967. With the release of Harichi Gakuen in 1968, he was faced with massive controversy due to his use of eroticism and crude humor in a school setting. Even with this backlash, the series was a huge success. In 1970, Nagai moved away from gag manga and began creating sci-fi and horror stories. One such series was 1972's Devil Man. Cutie Honey started as an anime production, which came about after Toei's planning manager, Kan Ariga, approached Nagai to develop another show, during the run of the highly successful Mazinger Z. As Nagai described, he wanted to create something sci-fi, while Ariga wanted something with a bit of eroticism. As a compromise, Nagai came up with the concept of a character doing a transformation scene that would feature brief nudity, and thus, Cutie Honey was born. The name Cutie Honey was then derived from an American TV show that Naga enjoyed called Honey West. Cutie Honey tells the story of Kisaragi Honey, the android creation of Dr. Kisagai. The manga opens with Honey starting school at St. Chapel School for Girls, an all-private boarding school located deep within the mountains of Okutama. Before Honey has even been able to settle into school life, however, she hears her father calling to her somehow 
so she rushes out the dorm. Once outside, Hani's father quickly explains that she has an electric transceiver located in her ear. Her father then explains that he's being pursued by Panther Claw and commands Honey to press her heart-shaped locket and to shout Honey Flash. By doing this, she transforms into Hurricane Honey, which gives her the ability to operate any mechanical vehicle. Does that include forklifts? Honey quickly speeds off on a motorcycle to her father's laboratory. Once she arrives, Honey finds that her father's lab is being ransacked with men in black panther hoods, being led by a woman wearing a panther claw on her head. This is Panther Claw, and they immediately start to attack, but Honey quickly dispatches of them. She then rushes into the next room to find her father bleeding out in the arms of another man. Her father dies but she still hears him calling out to her in the next room. Honey then finds a robotic version of her father, who explains that she is a super powerful android, with a secret device located within her called the Airborne Element Solidifier. This allows Honey to convert airborne particles into solid matter, and allows her to transform into seven different forms all with unique powers. She is also able to use the device to quickly disguise herself. This airborne element solidifier is an incredibly powerful device, which the international secret crime organization, Panther Claw, wants to possess for themselves, hence why they attacked. Honey is then instructed to protect herself from Panther Claw at all costs, to prevent the device from falling into their clutches. The robot also instructs Honey to quickly escape the house because it's going to blow up in order to keep her father's secrets. Honey understands and she turns to leave, but when she does, she runs into the man from earlier. The man's name is Hayami Seji and he is a reporter that was interviewing the doctor when Panther Claw attacked. Hayami then promises to keep Honey's secret and to assist her in any way he can to bring down Panther Claw. So, will Honey be able to remain hidden while simultaneously maintaining a life at school and bringing down Panther Claw? How will Hayami be able to help Honey in her fight? And what about that bizarre group of leaders over at Panther Claw? How will they try to capture Honey? To find out, you're just going to have to read the manga for yourself. Starting with the art, I liked it. I enjoy Nagai's overall style, especially how dynamic it can be. There is great representation of movement within the manga, which is complemented by the dynamic panel layouts. Naga utilizes an abundance of motion lines, as well as distorting the image to better represent movement, which works wonderfully. I also enjoy the dynamic poses of the characters utilized in the manga. It helped to make the movement in the manga more unique. Related to this previous point, the manga is full of some highly striking imagery. There were also some fantastic framing which highlights how much of a great mind for manga creation Nagai possesses. There were also some fantastic full-page panels which were well-crafted. The violence in the manga was also drawn well, and it has impact and oomph behind it like it should. There was a bit of interesting experimentation with the art in this manga. There were times when the art became sketchy looking, which added an extra quality to the emotion of a particular scene within the story. There were also a few moments in which the colors of the manga would be inverted. This would also happen during emotional moments that helped to make them particularly powerful. It also added an element to the art that was interesting to look at. 
I relished in the character designs of this manga, especially the ones for Panther Claw, because they were a bit reminiscent of designs from Devil Man. Their designs were interesting as well as being a bit goofy, but that actually fit with the tone of the manga. Speaking of which, there were times in the manga where the art style would change, becoming more cartoony in order to fit with the overall humorous tone of Cutie Honey. This change works incredibly well in these moments. Moving on to the story, it was good. I ended up liking the story the second time more than my first. The first time I read the manga, I was honestly fairly lukewarm about it, but that has changed. The story was a simple good versus evil with an individual going up against a shadowy secret criminal organization. What made the story unique was its comedic tone. The jokes were okay and they were frequent enough to not be jarring within the story. A few of the jokes, on the other hand, just didn't land, and one of them was so, so incredibly uncomfortable and bad. <sighs> Even though there is a comedic tone, the manga sure didn't hold back on any of the violence, especially in the early chapters. There were a number of enjoyable concepts found in the manga, such as the Enemies disintegrating after being defeated, so as to not leave any evidence behind. I also liked the concept of Cutie Honey being able to transform into these different forms, all with unique abilities. The manga does have those dated story details such as convenient powers at convenient times, and having to explain powers in the moment that they are utilized. These points are small, however, and are not all that egregious. As a character, I liked Honey. She was bombastic, highly intelligent, and just didn't give a fuck, which made her fun to follow. Expanding upon Q's intelligence, one of my favorite aspects of this manga was how Honey utilized her intelligence to cleverly defeat a number of her opponents throughout the manga. The fights ended up being fairly solid, however, a few of them were not so great. A few were anticlimactic, one of which was supposed to be the most important fight of the manga, the final one. Unfortunately, the final fight was... Eh, I felt it was a bit too short and not all that exciting. I did still end up liking the ending of the manga. It was left a bit open, but it didn't make the manga feel unfinished. I'm sure that the story was continued within the anime, but what we got here in the manga worked well enough as its own self-contained story. The other characters were very minor within the grand scheme of the story. The focus is on Honey, and so characters such as Honey's friends Akai Natsuko and Hayami were not all that well developed. Much of the same could be said about Panther Claw. However, they were interesting to watch based on just how evil and outlandish they were. Panther Claw was also a fairly competent criminal organization. Their plans were actually fairly good and they did feel like a genuine threat. Panther Claw was pretty balls to the wall with their plots and murders. Overall, I liked Nagai's art style, and the story of the manga was decent. Some aspects of the art that stood out to me was the movement Techniques and emotion Nagai to a number of the ad. scenes. There was also some fantastic, just striking art found within the manga. The designs were fun, especially for Panther Claw, because they fit with the over-the-top and goofy tone of the story. The manga is filled with some great concepts, such as Honey's powers. The story worked well, and the jokes in the manga 
never really got on my nerves. Except for that one. Honey's character was great. She was a fun protagonist to follow, and I enjoyed watching her use her intelligence. The supporting cast, on the other hand, were not well developed. As for the ending, I liked the way that I was left open without making the manga feel unfinished. All of this considered, that's why I'm going to be giving Cutie Honey by Go Nagai a 8 out of 10. And that's the video I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you agreed with what I had to say about Cutie Honey by Go Nagai. It is a fairly solid action manga that is also a bit humorous. So I would recommend checking it out. Anyway, I hope to see you on this channel again real soon. Goodbye.